so at the, starting at the Google level, we have um, data centers in four continents. So we're in North America, South America, Asia, and uh, um, Europe, of course. We have um, a, probably one of the world's largest global private networks with um, you know, 13 undersea cables that are our own and um, hundreds of thousands of miles of dark fiber and, and lit fiber that we, you know, we operate. Like I said, probably one of the world's largest networks. Um, we have uh, in, uh, in Europe, we're in uh, five countries in Europe, we're in two countries in Asia, we're in one country in South America, um, and that's at the Google, and in North America, of course, we have many, many, many sites across all of North America. That's at the Google level. Now, cloud has 19 regions that they operate in, and 58 zones. So each region, of course, has multiple zones in it. Um, you know, we, we cover, uh, Google has presence in over 200 countries worldwide, so really it is truly global operations. So AccuWeather's been running an API service for the past 10 years and we have lots of enterprise clients, but we started to realize we were missing a whole business opportunity. So we partnered with Apigee and we created a new self-serve API developer portal that allows developers to go in there, sign up on their own, and get started. And it's been great for us as far as like basically unlocking new revenue opportunities with APIs. Because as you said, everything is APIs. And we also say everything is impacted by the weather. So why not have everyone use AccuWeather APIs to fulfill their weather needs? Yeah, yeah, I think if you look at what's going on, and I talk to a lot of customers uh, and developers and, uh, and IT teams, and clearly, I think they are overwhelmed with the different things which are going on in this space. So how do you make it simple? How do you make it open? How do you make it hybrid so you have flexibility of choice? It's becoming top of the mind for many of the users nowadays. Uh, the lock-in, which many vendors currently provide, it becomes very difficult for many of these uh, users to kind of keep on moving around and meet the business requirements. So I think uh, having a solution and technology stack, which is really understanding that complexity around that and making it simple enough to adopt, I think is important. Yeah, so the focus, well, there's a theme on a couple different levels. The broad theme is a cloud like no other because we've introduced a lot of new different features and products and programs. We introduced Anthos this morning, which was really a revolutionary way of using containers, broadly multi-cloud, hybrid cloud. So it's from a product standpoint, but it's also a cloud like no other because it's about the community that's here and it's truly a partnership with our customers and our partners about building this cloud together and we see the community as a really key part of that. It's really core to Google's values around openness, open source technology, and really embracing the broader community to build the cloud together. Well, you know, I think it continues to, uh, we continue to cooperate in the technical community very well. And a couple of data points, right? One is around Kubernetes that started, what, four or five years ago, and that's going really strong. But more importantly, you know, as the industry matures, uh, there are what I would call special interest groups that are starting to emerge in the Kubernetes community. One thing that we are paying very close attention to is the storage sig, which is the ability to federate storage across multiple clouds, and how do you do it seamlessly within the framework of Kubernetes, as opposed to trying to create a hack or a one-off that some vendors attempted to do. So we try to take a very holistic view of it and make sure, I mean the industry we are in, Standards drive volumes and volumes drive standards. So I think we play very, very close. I think one of the biggest things that I'm seeing in this entire conference to date has been almost a mind shift change. I mean, this is conference is called Google Next, and for a long time that's been one of their biggest problems. They're focusing on what's next rather than what is today. And they're inventing the future almost at the expense of the present. I think the big messaging today was both about reassuring enterprises that yes, they're, they're serious about this, and also building a narrative where they're now talking about coming at this from a position of being able to embrace customers where they are and speak their language. I think that that's transformative for Google and it's something I don't think that we've seen them do seriously, at least not for very long. Well, I think that there's no question that this is a data game. And we said early on, John, on theCUBE, that the, the, the big data war was going to be won in the cloud. The data was going to reside in the cloud, and having now machine intelligence applied to that data is what's giving companies competitive advantage. 
at scale and economics. I, I was struck by the stats that Google gave at the beginning of the keynote today. Google in the last three years has spent $47 billion on capital expenditures. This year to date alone, they've spent $13 billion in CapEx in data centers. 13 billion. It would take IBM three and a half years to spend that much in CapEx. It would take Oracle six years. So from an economic standpoint and a scale standpoint, Google, Microsoft, and Amazon are going to win that game. There's no question in my mind. I, I am a student of AI. I did my master's and PhD in that, and I went through that change in my career because we had to collect the data, batch it and analyze it, and actually make a decision about it. And we had a lot of false positives, in some cases and some negative positive hey, <laughs> misses hey, hey. too, which you don't want that either. And what happened is our modeling capabilities became much better. And we, with this rich data, and you actually tap into that data lake. You can go in there, the data is there, and this spread data. We can pull in data from different sources and actually remove the outliers and make our decision real time right there. We didn't have the processing capability. We didn't have a place like Pops Up where Globe can scan and bring in data at hundreds of gigabytes of uh, data. That's messaging that you want to deal with at scale, no matter where it is, and process that that wasn't available for us. Now it's available, it's like a candy shop for technologists. Yeah, all yeah. these technologies in our hands and we wanted all these things. And so if you look at that category of that repetitive work, AI can play a really amazing role in helping alleviate that mundane repetitive work. And so, um, you know, great example of that is Smart Compose, um, which hopefully you've used. Yep. Uh, and so what we look at is things like, say, a salutation in an email, where you have to think about who are you addressing, how do you want to address them, how do you spell their name, we can alleviate that and make your composition much faster. Um, so the exciting announcement that we had today was that we are leveraging the Google Assistant, so the Assistant that you're used to using at home via your home devices or on your phone, and we're connecting that to your Google Calendar. And so you'll be able to ask your Assistant what you have on your schedule, uh, you know, know what's ahead of you during your day, uh, and be able to do that on the go. So, you know, I think in general, one of the unique opportunities that we have with G Suite is not only AI, but taking these products that consumers know and love and bringing them into the enterprise. And so we see that that helps people adopt and understand the products, um, but it also just brings that like consumer grade simplicity and elegance in the design into the enterprise, which brings joy to the workplace. Yeah, so we've been, work we've been hard at work over the last eight months since our last next. Can you believe that it's only been eight months? Yes. <laughs> and we, last, last year we were here announcing GKU on-prem. This year, We've rebranded CSP to Anthos and enlarged it, and we've moved it to GA. So that's the big announcement. In our spotlight, we actually walked through all the pieces and gave three live demos, as well as had two customers on stage. And really the big difference in the eight months is while we're moving to GA now, we've been working throughout this time with a set of customers. We saw unprecedented demand for what we announced last year, and we've had that privilege of working with customers to build a yeah. product, which is what's unique, really. Yeah. Uh, and so we had two of those folks up on stage talking about the transformation that Anthos is creating in their companies. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think particularly most of the larger enterprise accounts uh, tend to have a multi-vendor strategy for uh, almost every category, right? Including cloud, which typically is one of their largest spends. Um, and you know, it's, it's uh, typically what we see is people looking at certain classes or workloads running on uh, particular clouds. So it may be uh, transactional systems running on AWS, uh, you know, a lot of their more traditional enterprise workloads that were running on Windows servers, potentially running on Azure. Uh, we see a lot of interest in uh, data intensive uh, sorts of analytics workloads, potentially running on uh, GCP, uh, and so I think larger companies tend to kind of look at it in terms of what's the best platform for the use case that they have in mind. Um, but in, in general, you know, I, 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 they are looking at multiple cloud vendors.